Compression tends to be the go-to processor for the bus or the group level, but is it possible and is it appropriate to go beyond compression when we talk about processing on the group level? And the answer is yes, you can absolutely do and apply whatever you want as long as you have a reason for doing so. And that's fundamentally what mixing is all about, whether it's at the track level, the group level, or on the master bus. You listen back to everything, you hear something that you want to adjust, you hear something that you want to change, you then put the processor on there, you put in the settings, you listen back and you ask yourself, is what I've just done helping or is it actually hurting? Does it sound worse than it did before? And then that determines whether or not you leave the effect on there and then you move on, you listen, you say, okay, I need to adjust this next part, you do it and it just continues on and on down the line until you have your final mix at the end. So it's totally cool and fine to use any processor you want as long as you have that reason to do so, as long as it makes sense to you and then you're able to uh, objectively determine whether or not it's helping or hurting the cause. And at this point in the course, there's really not a whole lot of new strategies that we're going to be talking about with regards to the processors, at least specifically for like group processing. You're going to use the same strategies, only now you're probably going to be a lot more subtle with the settings that you put in. And the reason for that is now that you're processing on the group, you have more than one track being adjusted at the same time. So if you've just spent 10 or 15 minutes using EQ and compression and all of our effects to create space and cohesion on that individual track level, if you then go in and let's say take an EQ and you start putting in like really sharp gains and sharp cuts, that could totally go against what you just were trying to do. So it ends up being a little more subtle. You're listening not only to the group itself and the balance within the group, but now you can listen to it a little bit more top level and start to listen to how these groups are all balancing with one another and then making those subtle changes because normally all it needs are subtle changes if you've got the tracks to sound the way that you want them to sound. And again, there's no rule about what processor can or cannot be used on the group level. Here are just a handful of examples that I could think of. And of course, there are many more. It all is about the context and what you're trying to accomplish. But you could use a saturator, a dynamic EQ, or an exciter instead of the traditional compressor. So if you're listening back to it and you feel like maybe dynamic EQ will work better, you know, feel free to use that. It's <laughs> totally up to you and what you're hearing. You might want to use a dynamic EQ in a sidechain configuration to carefully make a little more room for the most important element, or I should say probably the most important group. So if you have, let's say, a lead vocal and you have some doublings on that as well, and they're all in a group, that might be the most important part of the whole mix. Or maybe it's some kind of a synthesizer, a lead synth that really drives through, really is uh, in your face the thing that's exciting and driving the track forward. You might have every other group be side-chained to that and slowly every time it comes in just taking out a little bit of gain in that frequency region where that lead element is so important. That is something you could definitely do very subtly but it will make a pretty big difference and it will give you that extra little oomph that you might need if the really important element isn't sticking out as much as you'd like it to. You could also go with a blend EQ to further put a group of instruments, you know, quote unquote, in a range and or to add a little bit of further cohesion so if you have all of your synthesizers and you notice that they all sound a little bit dull, you could maybe go into, you know, the 5K, 3K, 10K sort of range and add a really small amount of boost there to all of the instruments. And that will serve two purposes. One, it will make everything sound a little bit more bright. And number two, it might act as a cohesive force to make those synths all sound like they belong together because they're going through that same processor. Also, you could go with a specialty EQ on a group if you haven't used a lot of a specialty EQ throughout the mix, and then it will, of course, make that group special. It's going through a special processor that nothing else is going to go through, and that's normally the reason you would do something like that. Also, we have here subtle amounts of production reverb. We'll come back to that in a second. Chorus or delay can help tie together some groups, again, for this idea of cohesion. So like a really short delay time or something can maybe bring things together if they're not sounding like they fit. Chorus, maybe on a bunch of guitars, really, really light amounts of that on the group can bring them all together. And then last case sort of um, final scenario might be to go with a production reverb 
and you're going to put really light settings on here. Maybe you don't even hear the decay time at all, but in this case, it's meant more as a tonal shift to try to bring them all together. And again, we will be getting into mixed reverb, which I think nine times out of 10 will end up solving this problem. But there is that one out of 10 time where it doesn't. And you need to, if you have, let's say, 10 different synthesizers and they don't sound like they're fitting, they just seem like they're so not related to one another, something like a production reverb at the group level can maybe go in and fix that. But these are just examples that I could think of off the top of my head, things that I've done in the past. And as you mix more and more music, you'll start to find your own formulas and ideas for group processing. The final idea here, and this is something that we've been coming back to again and again, is you really should just be going on instinct here. There's no such thing as a right or wrong as long as there's a reason. Okay, it can be a case where 99% of people disagree with you about whether or not what you've done sounds better or worse, but it doesn't matter. You're the only person that matters in this instance, and you're going to do what you think sounds the best, even if other people disagree with it, as long as you have a reason. Okay, if you give me your reason for why you've applied a processor, and it makes sense to me, and more importantly, it makes sense to you, then I have no arguments with it. I'm not going to tell you, no, that sounds bad, because then it just becomes my subjective opinion, which isn't what this is about. This is about you making decisions. Fundamentally, it's about you being the one to make decisions, not copying off what someone else does because they say it sounds right. So have the initial idea, try it out, listen to the results, and judge accordingly. We'll jump back into the DAW and look at a couple of examples here, uh, but really I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. You're using the same sorts of strategies we've talked about before, only now probably a little bit more subtle and at the group level. All right, so we're going to come back to that drum group we looked at before and just talk about a few different examples of things that we could do on the group beyond just the basic compression or peak limiting that we looked at before. So let's listen back to it and try a few different things out. So we talked about the low end kind of being the thing that's driving this and in a lot of ways, I really like that. I would probably leave it as it is, but it might be a little bit too much for some people. So I could go into the TDR Nova, for example, and use one of these bands here to just do a tiny bit of dynamic EQ, right? So if I play this back now and I think we can solo this guy, go in here, play a little bit through. We can hear that effect already taking place. Get a little more going just to emphasize it. I wouldn't do more than this in reality, but so you can hear it. So you can hear how much power that actually takes away from the low end. So this is definitely too extreme. So we could do something like that. If it seemed really extreme to us, of course, what we would do is just go into the kick drum itself and probably get a little bit of that sub out using either a dynamic EQ or just the classic blend EQ. But we're focused on the group here. So that's something that I could do if I felt like the balance was a little bit off. Another thing I could obviously do if I think the balance is off is I could go with the exciter and I can add just a little touch to the top end here. So that should give me some balance, right? And a little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. 
So I could do something along those lines. The other thing I could do is not use the loud max, which is our you know peak limiter at the end, or we could use it really uh, very subtly here. I'm just gonna put this all the way back up to zero, see if it's doing anything. Don't think it will be, which is fine. And then I could go in here at the group level and I could add in our saturator instead, which will clip off some of those peaks for us. So let's just take a look at this. Okay, we're coming in at a good level. We'll drive it a little bit until we hear that distortion. Okay, that's good. And now we can mess around with the ASIM mix. So remember, if we push it to the left, it's going to sound more like a compressor. You're going to hear the movement happening. If we go more towards the right, it's going to be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more smooth, which is probably what I want in this case. But we'll try both. So that sounds pretty good to me. And then we can get a little bit of a, uh, a balance here with the frequencies as well. So if we feel like power has been taken away from the low end, which oftentimes might happen with a saturator like this, we can put the response back towards that low frequency. Or we could bias it towards the highs. Let's just hear a before and after. Cool, and now I'll just use the peak limiter just a little bit. And then go back and maybe adjust my settings here. Feeling like we need even a little bit more. There we go. All right, so with nothing, and then with a whole lot of stuff. So it might be a little bit bright for some people's tastes. It's really, again, just a matter of aesthetic preference and what you prefer the sound of and what's going to uh, help the best for the production that you're working on or what you think is going to help the most, I should say. So we could also go in here to another group that we have, for example, this shaker group here. Always make sure you're labeling things. And let's just put this out in solo right now and take a listen to it. So on one of these parts, we already have the Valhalla Freak Echo with a little bit of movement going on, but we could enhance this maybe by putting on an EQ or also even by just going with something like um, the chorus effect in really subtle amounts. So let's try both of those things. Let's go with the slick EQ and let's also change up the loop length here. Maybe let's put a little bit of a shelf here. Cool. And then maybe go with a little bit of a chorus as well. I'm just going to go with number one there. It also adds a little bit of volume, as you can hear. All right, then we can group those together. And let's listen to it in context.
you can hear that we're having a bit of a problem, maybe because we put on that EQ where it's now clashing a little bit with, let's see, what is that sound that it's clashing with? It might be, uh, it's not this hi-hat. I think it's this thing. I think it's this open hat. Yeah. So I would maybe then go into this individual track and I would put on then again, like a blend EQ. I might even just copy and paste over the settings that we had from the group here. And what I'll do then is I'll just kind of do the inverse effect and uh, let's paste it. Let's take a little bit out here instead. And then maybe enhance something more. All right, we'll try something like that. And you know, in reality, they're actually serving different purposes. So I feel like I put the wrong sort of an EQ setting here on the shaker group to begin with. What I really should do is actually go in here and add the gain probably. And it's okay to go extreme with settings if you need to. Remember, this is about hearing what you're doing. Okay, that's cool. And then we'll go and put the shelf on this one. That's kind of harsh though, isn't it? Okay, but now they should blend a little bit together, uh, better together and stick out on their own. So we're kind of doing the whole put the puzzle together here. And now I think you can really distinctly hear those two parts if you're really focusing in, whereas before they might have been clashing on top of each other a little bit. So the other example and thing I want to show you is what if we want to do something like a very subtle amount of sidechain dynamic EQ to make room for like a vocal when it comes in. So this is, of course, not a real life example. This is purely theoretical. But let's listen to what happens when we bring this vocal into the fold. Whatever you give. Whatever you give. So the way that we had that mixed before, and again, this is why volume is so important. When the volume was really loud, it wouldn't need any sort of dynamic EQ. It's really sticking out there. But if we're pulling this back a little bit, it might help to put on dynamic EQ on the drums group to make room for this. So what we would do is we would go in here and we'd go to our mix tools, grab the TDR Nova first, just because I want to see what this Whatever looks like. You Whatever you give. Whatever you give. Whatever you give. Just trying to get a little bit more clarity so you can hear the words. Whatever you give. Whatever you give, whatever you give. That works for me. And then we'll go in here and we'll add another instance of the Nova. This time we're going to go and turn the side chain to come from this vocal part. We'll go ahead and use post here. Jump in here, side chain. We want it to be external side chain. And then the really cool thing that I didn't mention to you guys before, I think I put it in a little note, but you can actually put the analyzer onto side chain so you can see that when it comes in and then make your decision based on the frequencies that you're seeing. Whatever you do. So I'd probably choose a band around here. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Whatever you give, whatever you give, whatever you give, and I want to be very subtle. You give, whatever you give. All right, so here it comes. 
Whatever you give. So you can't even hear that that's happening. I do not hear that dynamic EQ, but let's see if it makes a difference when we turn it off. It may not, but let's try it out. Whatever you give. And with it on. Whatever you give. Eh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Like I've said before, those of you with a more discerning ear will probably be able to tell. But that's some of the ideas and some of the applications of group processing. Again, this is so much about using your ear, and it's so much about experimenting. I can't say or state that enough. So I hope that that's helped you, and uh, have fun experimenting with that.